variables. Now, our major intention uh, or our major takeaway from this uh, session should be how do I link up the relationship between the two variables and if there is some kind of relationship or dependency between the two variables, how do I use the information or the relationship to predict one given the other? So, correlation is talking about uh, understanding the relationship between the two variables. Let us say I want to find out whether there is some kind of relationship between profits and sales that is the data I would like to work out with right to help you understand that uh, concept I want to look out whether there is any kind of relationship between profits and sales of a company of, of different companies so the moment I know what should be the sales what is the sales can I predict what could be their profits so that is the one which I would like to look at. So whenever I want to compare the relationship or identify the strength of the relationship between the two variables, I am resorting to the correlation kind of analysis and probably given the sales, if I want to predict what could be the profits. So predicting one of those variables given the other is what is the process of regression. So, before we get into that particular process, uh, to understand correlation, even we are looking at a term called covariance. It is nothing but, it is also a measure which is uh, talking about how one variable is moving with respect to the other. When one of the variables has increased, what has happened to the other variable? Did it decrease? or did it increase at the same rate as the first variable or did it increase or decrease at a smaller rate or at a larger rate or is it more or less flat. So all these kind of the way the second variable is moving with respect to the first variable is an indication of covariance. So what we look at is the average, the average uh, product some product the average product of differences of each of the variable from their corresponding means is what is the way we define the covariance so i'll try to apply these things on the data so that the things become uh, more clear for us so for this i have taken one simple uh, data set wherein i have captured the profits of some hundred companies in the pharmaceutical uh, industry along with their sales in a particular year. So at a particular point in time, I have captured the profits as well as the sales of some hundred companies in a particular industry itself. Now I want to see is there any kind of relationship between the profits and the sales. So before getting into that particular uh, process, we are first trying to find out the covariance. So, for finding out the covariance, I really require as a formula, the what I require is x minus x bar into y minus y bar, which is the uh, mean of x subtract from each of the x, the mean of y subtract from each of the y, multiply them and add up for all the data whatever we have add that up and divide by n minus 1 generally the division by n minus 1 is more associated because we work with sample data but if we work with the entire population data then probably in, instead of n minus 1 we can use n itself so using this specific uh, formula we can find out the covariance and once we find out the covariance we can get into the process of finding the correlation between those two variables so let me get into this process here so mean of profits i want to find out the mean of profits wherein i'll simply take the average 
I'll take the average. So probably you could add up all these numbers and divide by 100, which will give me the average. So the average profit is somewhere around uh, 98 bucks. Whereas if I take the mean of sales, right if i take the mean sales this is coming out to i'm taking the average if i take the average of sales this is somewhere around 1016 bucks fair enough so these are my x bar and y bar right i can take anything as x i'll take anything as y for the time being so uh, the mean of the profits is 98 and mean of sales is 1016.04 now okay let me by default itself let me take this as y and let me take this as x so the next thing i am interested in finding out is x minus x bar y minus y bar so I will find out uh, x minus x mean which is nothing but x bar right I find out x minus x bar which is x minus x mean so each value I subtract the mean from it I subtract the mean from it and this is what I call as x minus x bar okay there are some positive values there are some negative values so this is what is coming out as each value i am subtracting the mean from it which is x minus x bar similarly i will do y minus y bar right so y oh sorry x minus x mean which is probably i should call this as y minus y mean So here I will take x minus uh, x mean x bar. So x minus x bar x is the sales of each of the company minus the mean sales. Okay x minus x bar. This is what is the case for all of them. Then as per the covariance computation formula I need to multiply x minus x bar with y minus y bar so probably i'll call this as product wherein i am multiplying x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar for each one of them so this is the product i am getting x minus x bar into y minus y bar then i have to add up all of them and divide by n minus 1 to arrive at the covariance so i am getting the covariance here as the summation of all these things as the summation of all these things divided by 99 because i have 100 data points n minus 1 is what i have to take so i am dividing by 99 giving me that the covariance is some 354000 this is what I am getting as the covariance. Of course, if I am working out with a formula of Excel also, I don't need this entire thing. But if at all, just to understand the concept, uh, if at all uh, at some point you are, uh, you are required to derive this particular formula, it's better that you know how we come to this computation of covariance. Each of the observations of uh, the, the X and Y, the variables, we subtract its corresponding mean from each of the observations, multiply it pairwise, add it up and divide by n minus 1. Otherwise, I can even use the covariance formula between the two sets of values. This, comma, this, comma, this. This is the covariance I am using between the two sets of variables which is also coming out to the same number. So either I can use a formula kind of an approach or the procedure kind of an approach but in whatever the case 
the covariance between the two variables is coming out to 354,729. Now, the problem here is, is it high? Is it low? What is it? What does this 354,729 mean? That is where the basic problem lies with the covariance. It's not meaningful. Because it is very much sensitive to the scale. Probably if I have large data, uh, I mean large data and even very high values physically, absolute values are high, automatically the covariance could result into a very large value. So there are no bounds to it. Probably uh, it may be going up to plus infinite or it may be going up to minus infinite also. So there is no way I can typically uh, say whether the covariance is uh, high or low. That is the reason we are going one more step further in terms of identifying what is called as correlation because covariance though it is talking about the movement between the two variables when one is moving in one direction what is happening to the other but at least what I can interpret from covariance is if it is positive probably I can say that both the variables are moving together in the same direction if it is negative we can say that the, both the variables are moving more in the opposite direction at least to some extent the sign can be a useful thing but I cannot do anything more than the sign there the absolute value of the covariance doesn't give me any kind of an indication <clears throat> that is where we are getting into what we are calling as the correlation correlation probably is a much better interpretation of covariance because the correlation is talking about the strength because what it does is it normalizes the covariance by dividing by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y it's a kind of a normalization relationship where the covariance is is uh, adjusted by dividing by the standard deviations of each of them so because of that reason we find that the correlation value will always lie between minus 1 to plus 1 only not like minus infinite to plus infinite kind it always lies between the minus 1 to plus 1 itself so because of that we can very well establish the strength of the relationship between the two variables so if i look at it here so i need the standard deviations now how do i get the standard deviation x minus x bar whole squared instead of doing x minus x mean like this okay x me x minus x mean x minus x mean squared right i can take x minus x mean squared so this number i can take it as squared similarly i will take y minus y mean squared so here also i will take y minus y mean squared all right 